This is a quick video lesson on three concepts that were discussed in this course on financial analysis. And those three concepts were horizontal analysis, vertical analysis, and we'll spend a little bit more time on ratio analysis since that's probably the most popular way of analyzing financial statements. Horizontal and vertical analysis are pretty straightforward. Horizontal analysis means we're just looking across from period to period to period and we were looking for basically trends and I usually like to have at least five years of comparative data so I can pick up on the trends and if the changes are going all over the place from period to period and it's hard to see any trends then you may have to take an average if that's what you're trying to do for a projected balance in the following period and when you look at things vertically you're just simply expressing them as a percentage so if you look at the income statement, you would express the income statement accounts on that statement as a percentage of revenues. And on the balance sheet, you would express the various balance sheet accounts as a, as a percentage of total assets. And the next slide actually gives you some examples of this. We have two simple examples on this slide at the top horizontal analysis. In 2008, we'll call that the base period that we're going to compare everything against. So everything is set at 100%. In the following year, 2009, our revenue number increased from $100,000 to $108,000. $8,000 divided by $100,000 is 8% increase, 108%. In the following year, 2010, the revenue number went up to $120,000. $20,000 divided by $100,000 is a 20% increase, or 120%. So in 2010, we're comparing everything against that base period, 2008, and we're showing what the percentage increases are, or changes from year to year from that base period. In the example below, we have vertical analysis. In this example, we have net sales of $300,000. We show it at 100%. And our gross profit is 80%. So basically what we're saying is for every dollar of net sales, 80 cents is gross profit, 30 cents of that dollar is net income. And you can also say that return on sales is 30%. So vertical analysis kind of helps give you insights into some of those ratios that we're going to talk about in the next slides. So we'll spend a little bit more time on ratios and this is probably the most important technique used in financial analysis. There's a lot of reasons why ratios are so popular. First of all, it, ratios show you a relationship. And when you express relationships, it's very easy for people to size up performance. And uh, ratios are pretty easy to calculate. And you can create your own ratios as well. And not only that, it's not unusual for me to go down to like the public library. And they have two different volumes of books I can pull from to benchmark ratios for very specific industries. And if you went through this course, there was an actual pop-up example on one of the pages where we actually showed you some uh, benchmarks that you could use. So what I'll do is I'll talk about the four basic kinds of ratios that you need to be familiar with on the next few slides. So the first group of ratios we'll call liquidity ratios, which basically measures a company's ability to meet its short-term obligations. And two ratios that come up a lot are the current ratio and the quick ratio, or sometimes called the acid test ratio. The current ratio just means current assets divided by current liabilities. And the quick ratio example will subtract out less liquid assets, such as inventory, so if you have slow moving inventory items, let's say you're a car dealership and you sell automobiles, that's not, a va that's not a real rapid turnover type of inventory. So you may want to subtract out those kinds of inventories when you do this liquid ratio analysis. So we'll go through an example of this on the next slide. So in this example, we have current assets of $57,000 and we just simply divided it by the current liabilities and we only had one current liability on the balance sheet accounts payable so if you divide 57,000 divided by 11,500 that's five that means basically you have five times more current assets to cover your current liabilities 
and then if you subtract out those inventory items, and in this case we have $39,000 of inventory, then that coverage drops from 5 to 1.5 in this example. The second group of ratios we'll look at are leverage ratios to measure the degree to which a company leverages itself in terms of the debt and equity. So one ratio would be the debt in relation to the equity of the company, total liabilities divided by the total owner's equity. And you can also express debt in terms of total assets, total liabilities divided by total assets. And the next slide provides a simple example. So some examples of the leverage ratios, debt to equity ratio, you have total liabilities on the balance sheet of $84,500 and you have total equity in the company of $172,500. So if you divide $84,500 by $172,500, that gives you 49%. So for every dollar of equity, you have 49 cents of debt on the balance sheet. And then the second ratio, debt debt total assets would simply take the total liabilities of 84,500 divided by the total assets of 257,000 is 33%. So that basically means that for every dollar that I put in to this company in terms of the resources to generate revenues, I'm basically going out and borrowing 33 cents on the dollar to come up with that investment. And the third type of ratios we want to look at are turnover ratios. That has to do with how well a company manages its assets. In particular, we can look at accounts receivable and inventory. So you want to turn those kinds of assets over and you don't want to hold on to those assets for very long. So there are ratios to actually calculate that. Accounts receivable turnover and inventory turnover and how many days did you hold accounts receivable and how many days did you hold inventory. And we'll go through some examples on the next slide of how these ratios are actually calculated. So an example of turnover ratios as it relates to receivables, accounts receivable would be, for example, accounts receivable turnover. We would divide the credit sales number of $620,000 by $12,400, which is the receivable number. And we're assuming that sales revenues are credit sales, so there's a relationship between the fact that those revenues are money owed to us and will pass through the receivable account, so we can make that relationship. And if that relationship is for one year, the sales revenue number represents a one-year number, and that receivable is basically the balance we have during the year, more or less, we can say, okay, we divide $620,000 divided by $12,400. So during the year, we're able to turn our receivables over 50 times during that time frame. And once you know what that ratio is, the turnover ratio, then you would take the turnover ratio and you would divide it into the number of days during the year or the period that you're questioning. And in this case, a one-year period is 365 days. The turnover ratio is 50. So that means on average, you only held those receivables for seven days, which is a very short period of time. So we want to get the turnover high and the receivable numbers. We want, to, we want to hold that receivable for a very short period of time. This is the kind of stuff you don't want to hold on to. So we're looking for high turnover ratios and minimal days held. And the fourth and final set of ratios are profitability ratios. There's uh, four different ratios that we can look at for profitability. One is profit margin, net income divided by sales, operating margin, sometimes it might be gross profit rather than operating income, operating income divided by sales, return on assets, okay, so how much return did you invest on the assets you invested in the business, that's net income divided by total assets, and we'll use the average balance for the year then return on equity, net income divided by total average equity during the year. And we'll show you an example of this on the next slide. So an example of a profitability ratio, for example, if we want to look at profit margin, we divide net income over sales. So that's basically a return on sales or profit margin. So for every dollar of sales, we're able to get 10 cents to the bottom line, basically and the operating income, notice that we have a little noise in the income statement, investment revenue, that's not operational related. So if I calculated operating income, 
I would focus on the operational stuff, sales revenue, less cost of goods sold, less marketing and selling expenses, less G&A, general administrative expenses. That gives me operating income of 33000 divided by that sales revenue number of 620000 and that's a 5% operating margin that I'm earning on my income statement. That's the profitability ratio. So those are the four ratios you really need to know, horizontal and vertical analysis.